gear ready for game number two between Origin and CLG. And Pixum Bands are ready here in the best of five grand final. Origin currently leading 1 0. And as we discussed earlier, some things to note that Cassidy being banned out right away, but this time by Origin. Not, I mean, even though they're on blue side, they didn't want to leave that option open. Keep in mind, this is a very strong champion if he can get out of the laning phase, right? Last game, it was last picked once he saw the matchup in the mid lane, said, oh, I can be Echo with Cassidy. And Origin giving the same credit to CLG, giving the same credit to Huhi, saying, look, we want to be able to play a champion that could get beat by Cassidy. Okay. What's well, another game where Kindred's up and Tom Kindred? Oh, well, no, they just banned Tom Kindred. Yeah. But yeah, is it going to be another game <laughs> where I think Kindred is going to be up as well, so... I think I actually really liked how Amazing played it. It looked a lot better. Um, yeah. I feel like he actually had really good ultimates that were mm -hmm. pretty game-changing as well. Also, his team was, like, willing to rely on the fact that Amazing would land a good ultimate. Yeah. Like, they yes. played around the fact, knowing that if they go low, there will be a Kindred ultimate available, and that just shows, again, you know, Origin as a team. Yeah. Replace expected. that's fine, because the shot calling is amazing at mid -D. You have yeah. a solid top laner. You have a, a rookie AD carry that doesn't get phased by anything. So for Power of Evil, it's plug and play, you know, put him on one of these comfort champions. And they perform. Looks like he's okay. He's gonna go with the leaves over over the kindred. Actually, they All did right. that last time that uh, kindred was up. Yes. Yep. yep. Yeah. They just went ahead with the leaves first. Felt that perhaps it's a it's safer pick, and there it is. It's where we usually see. Uh, obviously, the, I guess the Gragas, uh, no, not the Gragas coming. The Brown coming here for uh, for Mitty mm -hmm. in that matchup. That's what he seemed to be comfortable on. Yeah, I definitely think Brown's gonna come in here. I, I I liked it the last time he played it. It looked like any time the Alistar went in, he would just put up the shield and then yep. just, just <laughs> go for the ADC. Yeah. And now overall, I mean, this is also, you know, some big tests here for Smithy. Can he perform this weekend with something other than Gragas? We'll find out with the Kindred. If he can, it's going to be a game changer just the way the champion is. Now, it's also interesting seeing uh, what other game changing champions are up here because two of the bands that were aimed specifically at uh, Darshan have been dropped now in this game. So the oh, yeah. Fizz and I believe the other one was Riven yes. uh, are up this time around. And he gets last pick here on red side. So we saw the last game, a lot of heavy lifting by Soaz, also heavy lifting by the last pick mid lane. This time around, might CLG have that same advantage for themselves. Oh, the Shen pickup. I think it's most likely going to be a Shen support. Yeah. And it, last right. time that they, they had to do a blind pick like this, they picked the Rumble in the, on the last rotation too. So I think the sure. Origin's probably going to go with that route again. Yeah. I like also that they have saved both solos for last. If they had picked one, still gets to kind of pick that, and then again wait for last pick and right. pick both solos here. So picking these exact three rolls on blue side allows you to trade one for one in terms of counter picks. Fair enough. Sounds like a plan. The river might just be blind picked then by Darshan. Again, he said he wasn't happy with this play, but it is one of his favorites, and we all know that you know you give Riven an inch, and she's just gonna run a mile ahead of you. I think it's a smart approach for CLG. I think the biggest mismatch in the last game was Hui Power of Evil. So you definitely want to give him the counter pick if that can. Maybe make the matchup even, then it's still in the hands. Any Riven matchup is technically a skill matchup from what I've seen so far, so... But they still have the option of just picking something safe. I mean, you could pick, like, a Victor or Azir here and just farm out the mid lane, just try to go to late game, like, just just try to defend the Tristana here. Yep. So I think that would be a good pick here, too. Yeah, and something to fill out the damage portion, of course. Yeah, also, damage yeah, somewhere. Has that AoE AP, has that burst, is going to be helpful a lot. Because right now, I mean, sure, you get that snowball rolling, all three of those AD champions are going to do well. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit of a struggle for CLG. Okay, Ooh, if you are in the matchup. That's a pretty interesting matchup, just because I feel it's a real heavy skill matchup until yeah. one per like until you get the QSS on one of the people. Because you can QSS the Fury Ultimate. Oh, yeah. could be a Malphite as well. I mean, to get to okay, the Jinx. the damage. But Malphite into, it does, mm. like, I don't, Malphite into Kindred seems very, very uh, <laughs> easy to outplay. Yeah, I mean, there is burst. If Power can keep farming, and to be fair, he got a ton of CS last game, if he gets yeah. to his item spikes, early enough, like the Death Cap or the Void Staff comes in before the big team fights, they can burst uh, Kindred, Kindred before she can pop an ulti. But if you look at the global scope of, of Leak, though, in, in, in very few scenarios, do you actually want to use Malphite plus Ori ulti on the jungler? True. Because generally that is the tool that you pick. Right. That's how you punish Jinx. Low mobility, okay, hard engage, we got you. Right. Then you have like the equivalent to a Zillion ulti almost coming out from, from Kindred there, and it's easily telegraphed. So, I mean, very, very... Rarely will a Malphite completely surprise you to the point where Kindred can't put her ultimate down. So if Smithy doesn't stack up with Stick, say, we could see some some interesting team fights. Well, I mean, there's also potential for some really nasty Wombo where you could just Shen ulti the Malphite and just layer CC on top of the Jinx. So, I mean, even if you're staying alive, you're just going to yeah. be locked up for so long. You're still it's still not going to matter. Yeah, that's true. All right, well, a lot of All tools right. available then. Uh, also, just the fact that, you know, again, he's he's a good gank follow-up as well. At least yeah. gets around the map really quickly as well. So, yeah, Origin with a lot of playmaking available. CC in pretty much every single role possible. And the CLG last pick on the block is going to give Huhi some room to maneuver. He should be able to dodge almost all the crowd control here. And uh, I think this can actually really open the map up and, and create a lot of room for Jinx to crush. But if you're playing 
playing a, a LeBlanc pick, I would have rather, rather seen a control mage. Like, you already have the damage in, yeah. in your carries here. You just need reliable just team fight damage for, from a mage here. Instead of looking for that assassin potential, I think getting a victor, maybe some, something in just easy wave clear control mage that you can really just use to, to facilitate those carries in the Jinx and the Riven. I think the reason they didn't do that is just because they want something that can kind of function on its own. Because everybody's going to be trying to protect the Jinx and the Malphite's going to go in on her. They need somebody that can really function on their own. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. There are points on both sides here, but big questions here for CLG, getting these picks and also securing that LeBlanc for who he, they wait until the last moment, is it going to pay off for them against Origin? Origin at the same time, they look like they have a game plan against this Kindred and the Jinx. We'll find out in game number two between these two teams. Origin currently leading 1-0. Let's head over to the commentary with Demon, Doa, and Monty. Thank you very much, Chobro. So, what do we think coming into game two here? Very, very different picks coming out through the uh, entire teams. Yeah, and not trying to match the split push. Instead, uh, we do see Origin saying, okay, we're going to take the Malphite, try and stack that armor, and then move into team fighting mode. But there is some really intense chain CC here. Malphite Oriana combo, Malphite with a Shen ult on top of him coming in and CCing that back line. So, CLG is going to have to be very conscious of their team fight positioning. They can't get caught in the choke. They must spread out in the river or in the middle of a lane. Something like that, or they are going to get wrecked. Yeah, yeah I like this too by origin. I mean, they're throwing something different at CLG right after a win as well. So CLG still reeling from game number one. Now they have to adapt again. Yeah, and I was going to say, remember, obviously, that power of evil shockwave that caught double if That, was, that yeah. was pretty much the game winner. I guess we're going to hope that they can see something similar, catch out Stick but they do need to worry about Darshan. Darshan's not a champion that he's got the ability to carry, it's got the ability to split push, got the ability to do a lot of damage. And now, who he? Finally getting onto a different champion, onto LeBlanc, taking away the uh, chance. We'll see how it works out for him, how his LeBlanc play goes. It wasn't so spectacular on Echo in the previous matchup, but a lot of action ahead to go. Remember, this is a best of five if you have just joined us. Stoaz and Darshan, oh, the little, That's little right, slap solid. that you get from <laughs> Oh, Rock Solid. Who was originally named Rock Solid? Uh, well, I know. It's I, a good test for Doa. I have no <laughs> idea, man. It was before Doa started casting League of Legends. It actually was, yeah. I think that's, that's a little unfair. <laughs> it's the original Dignitas team. Oh, really? Actually, Rob yeah, Solid became know. Dignitas huh. the many you know. moons ago. That's actually where I got a lot of my replays from. Skara giving me the re <laughs> lot of replays a long time ago. That's how I uh, started out League Casting. A long time ago. Rock so it's Solid. Yeah. Huh. Minions have so Let's anyway, there's a bit of trivia for design. everyone at home. <laughs> wow. Let me know. A little bit of trivia to keep going. So what are we expecting? Okay, you can see already going to be some complete lane switches going on here. Looking, yes, it is going to be amazing. What, what do you rate on this? Obviously, Origin clearly have a lot of faith in Amazing Zelise. It is interesting to me that they are prioritizing it so heavily. They also have a read right here on where the jungle start is. So. Now, what that says is you want to try and make some, get some kills, but there's not a lot of hard CC, at least early on in these lanes. You need the Malphite to hit level six uh, to, to kind of chain that cocoon into another form of hard CC. You need that Orianna to be level six and get that shockwave. So maybe some advantages with the Shen in the bottom side, should they choose to gank there, but in a lane swap, that will be much more difficult. I mean, we know who he's really comfortable on this LeBlanc too. Mm -hmm. Seen him do well on it earlier today. And they're going to need him to do well on it. But I'd say, you know, anything's better than that Echo we saw in game number one. Yeah, that wasn't great. That yep. wasn't great. It didn't really work out too well for him. A couple of mistakes made. A couple of ultimates hit the wrong time. Yeah, Mithy not going to have the same sort of chances to get these big multi-man knockups, but could still get those big multi-man taunts too. So the functionality is similar, I suppose, in certain ways. Hmm, Mithy taking a little peek towards the mid. We did see a, a three-pronged attack, remember, on Bjergsen early on. So as going to look her up. Hello. Yep. Teleport to top lane. Okay, fine. Bilzy yep. will go up against Dixie. So as soon as uh, the Shen saw Alistair coming to actually help out in that bottom lane, it was just an instant TP. So no one actually wanting to go for the three-man push here. Uh, just, a, just a reaction as fast as can be, and that means that Riven is going to be able to pick up some of the farm around this turret, and they're still going to get a little bit of good damage down with that explosive shot. 
We've seen a bit of a slowdown in these lane swaps, you know. At the World Championship, everybody just constantly agreeing, and there's actually a Whoa. nice headbutt pull. Whoa, knocks Smithy right back under a turret, takes a lot of damage. Well, not too much, though. I don't know. That didn't seem to be worth a flash to me. Yeah, retrospect. It, it didn't end up being worth a flash at all. And yeah. That looks oh. like we may oh. have an oh. issue here. <laughs> I'm getting flashbacks back to now. <laughs> right? I, tell you. I, this, I feel like this is just me again. And sure as hell, it's CLG again as well. Not quite the European version, but you know, Crepo's on the desk, so uh, he's been through this one with me. <laughs> we both survived that day. Eight hours of silver scrapes. <laughs> Never forget. It's coming back again. Oh my God, that was that was interesting time. So, okay. Um, oh. Yeah, both of them lagged. Don't understand why. Uh, no, no flash on Alistair, please read me. Mithy pleading the case for Afro moving in game chat right now. TSM is okay, but Good news, uh, yeah, right? bad news for you is they're not in the final. Yeah. So, not so okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, CLG. I mean, wow, oh. you just had to bring the reality crashing back for that poor well, fan. T TSM the Rain Man knows what reality is all about. Uh, TSM is okay, guys, wearing an SK Telecom shirt. So, it seems like uh, <laughs> okay. he knows who they're okay good. Then, he, too, yeah. he, he knows who they're good teams. Yeah, it's just, it's just, you know, covering all the angles. It's like, and I, uh, really, I was an SKT battle. They're passable, I yeah. guess. <laughs> Yeah, you guys in the crowd, give it a wave, guys. We are waiting on this pause. You've been fantastic crowd throughout the last two days. A cap of Ross at the back there as well. Nice. Keeping things going. We'll just have some happy little pauses, you know, because <laughs> you got to have some pauses to see where the good games are, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's, it's got to keep it on the bright side, you know? It wasn't lag, it's just, uh, you know, a time for us to banter. That's it. A, t a time to talk. Time to talk. <laughs> I think if we put a tree right in front of the origin uh, screen, then uh -huh. that would cover it off nicely. Ruined. Ruined, Ruined D-Man. This is where I really wish we had a telestrator right here. Yeah. <laughs> so drawing all just over it. Just start drawing. <laughs> so yeah, big arrow screens is the trophy. <laughs> I feel it may get abused. <laughs> no. Can you see what it is yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want to go down that route. But uh, yeah, if you have just joined us, ladies and gentlemen, we are on a pause. Not exactly sure what it is. We saw the uh, the lag on the screen, so that's that's pretty much. You saw what we saw, and we're just sat here in the dark, just as much as you, apart from the, seeing the uh, witty banter between the players. Oh, and apart from the, the bright screen. light shining on us. Yeah, but the, the crowd totally is in literally the in the dark right now. They are so. in the dark. <laughs> that's nice. We try and keep things uh, both real, real and metaphorical at the same time here at right. RAM. Makes it more complicated. But a dancing, a dance party is broken out within the crowd, so that's good. A dance off, a dance off between the two. I didn't see what was the CLG. Oh, the song the is much. Sandstorm too. Darude Sand. Have you heard of that song? Hmm. Da 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 da. Nope. We're not. We're not getting that one. What does that say? Come on, you'll talk to It says Kuzan. Kuzan, it's a, a Jinair fan. Okay. <laughs> They're okay too, don't worry. They're getting okay SKT. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Dedication to Origin right there. I it's... like the exclamation mark at the end. It's just like... <laughs> we got a third guy. We yeah. need a punctuation mark, I guess. <laughs> it would have been TSM, but they just like, well, um, uh, Maybe that's okay. what it was before they rubbed <laughs> yeah. it off real quick. You know, CLG has three letters, guys. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. Maybe they didn't really fancy going that way. They're trying to back me. Uh, they'll probably just pull it down. They've got CLG shirts on. <laughs> it's whatever. Whoever's ahead at the moment. That's right. The Bama Sats still in fashion. It's okay. The best fans are the ones that bandwagon between both teams in the same game. <laughs> it's effective bandwagoning, you know. That's right. When you, when you think of bandwagoning, are you think of like an old school wagon like pulled by horses or something? or? Like a yeah, station wagon. I don't know where that came from. I'm going to have to yeah. look up the etymology on, on the that bandwagon. Yeah. I think it's, a, you, you know, how I always thought of it is used to have those, like, wagons with, like, a band on it that was promoting, like, a mayor in, like, a small town. Like, think of, like, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, that movie or whatever. So then you, like, get behind the, the bandwagon. You're like, yeah, I'll vote for that guy. Sometimes is it actually you're from a tiny, tiny, tiny town <laughs> in Midwest America I, is painfully obvious. I, so no, <laughs> I never saw this myself in I, real life. Okay, really? No, yeah, really. <laughs> I just think of like the girl, yeah. guy with the guitar, <laughs> slowly uh, playing away, everyone following. 
have to admit I have heard my relatives play that song at family gatherings. <laughs> really? I'll, I'll admit that. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> But anyway, guys, uh -huh. Anyway, <laughs> if you have just joined us, there is a slight pause here. Oh, the referee's just poked his head, and we're still unsure of exactly what the problem is. Uh, over on the other side, if you are using two monitors, which I hope you are, you can get your second screen on the go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there is also a Counter-Strike Finals yeah. happening, but right now we are back underway. Looks like the pause has been oh, all right. released. Sweet. We are back in the game. And... The bot lane matchup between CLG and Origin, of course. Who he, meanwhile, takes a bit of damage while his clone stands dejectedly behind the turret. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, a poor clone. <laughs> Couldn't they just make it disappear? Ooh, this is going to be an interesting gank. Amazing coming around. Yeah. Now. That minion wave will delay, and Power of Evil taking a massive oh, burst. Is it going to be enough? Because the Ignite goes down. Power of Amazing will pick himself Ooh. up first blood here, but that was so, so very close. Darshan's going to continue chasing here. This is a risky, risky play for him. Meanwhile, Myth has gone a little bit too deep down there. That's going to be the jungler. Now, Darshan hasn't got a great deal of damage. Power Hello. of Evil flashed in for that. Not even close to landing anything, Whoa. and now he's in trouble. That could well be the death of him. Amazing. He's just given up on me already. Power of E was going to go down. That was a straight trade. That was a big mistake by the mid laner. And now Mithy, where's he going? I don't know, man. He got knocked into the river by Alpha Moon. This is, kind of, this is not where I want to be right now. Well, gonna I feel think he, like a real ninja and get out of here. So he got behind the turret, and I'm wondering whether or not that had anything to do with an attempt to stop the teleport coming in from Darshan right there. Could have been. But in any case, a bit of a wacky flight fight. Power of Evil really overcommitting with that use of that flash over the wall right there. Ends up paying for it in that one-for-one -one trade. Advantage still going over to Origin, though. And uh, Soaz actually getting quite a bit of CS up as a result, pretty comfortably laning with Cloth 5 against this Jinx. Should be okay. The more armor, the merrier for Malphite, of course. And I feel like with sort of the C theme with that skin, he's really got the right one for a tournament in the Bay Area, right? Hey. I like, I was liking the, uh, the Fnatic uh, Gragas that Spooky was rocking out there. Yeah, yeah. a little bit of respect there. Yeah couldn't make it, so he's like, well, I'll get Fnatic here in one way or another. <laughs> well, Peke will at least respect it. You know, that was, <laughs> he was in our tournament once upon a time, <laughs> many moons ago. Amazing. Clearing out the pink ward. That's an expensive pink ward oh, earlier on to three. lose. And the bait was so obvious who he... Well, he may actually get away from this one. The exhaust use on Smithy. That's not the target they were looking for. They are going to get him down, though. Enough damage, but not quite to finish him off. And actually, who he Whoa. comes in and extinguishes the flame <laughs> that was amazing. Like, and now, where's Smithy going to go? I don't know. I guess uh, I guess they wanted the one for one there. Power of Evil. The way he's running away, they should change the name to Cower of Evil. <laughs> He looks very afraid. <laughs> that does indeed, but Mithy is still stuck behind enemy lines right now, and he's going to get collapsed on. It's okay, he's a ninja. He'll be fine. Yeah. Sneaking his way right out of there. There we go. <laughs> oh, he tried to get CS as well. Yeah, this is like, no, no. <laughs> totally unconcerned. Well, that should have definitely got better for Origin. They certainly got the drop and the bait on who he right there instead. End up handing him a kill. But so as just sitting up in this top side, collecting as much CS as he can. It's like, Niels, I'm back. You wouldn't believe what happened while I was going. <laughs> <laughs> I ran all the way through their jungle, and then I almost got killed, ran to mid lane. Then I tried to CS, but I couldn't quite get it because I'm a support. It was exciting. Exciting time for Mithy. Wild, wild times for the supports. He was, meanwhile, just chilling down that bottom lane. In terms of CS, it's actually working out well for both AD carries. You know, they're having their little solo play, but Soaz is the one that seems to be benefiting the most from this one, I feel. You know, on the on the Malphite, you'd expect, okay, he's going to be pressured, going to be pushed on his tower, but he's quite happily shoving up there because he's been events, uh, against a very passive Styx 8 in his top lane, and he's free farming right now. This is, it's all about these misplays, I feel, by the two mid laners. Well, and the fact that Soaz is just going to get so tanky in this game, uh, probably going to go for a Sunfire Cape just so that he can just clear the wave very efficiently with the Ground Slam and the passive AoE damage. Means that it's going to really cut down Riven's options when it comes to that split push. Of course, the passives from Malphite making him not only the shield from his passive, but his... <laughs> His ability to basically have an armor death cap for free. <laughs> By yeah. it, getting a, the 30% additional armor is pretty significant when it comes to how he's able to build. And against basically three attack damage champions and Kindred, Riven, 
and uh, Jinx, it's going to be very, very effective in this game. And he'll have enough HP probably to survive LeBlanc anyway. Nice invade there from Smithy and Afro Mood, taking away that red buff. But Hello. they must realize that Amazing was most likely in the top half of the jungle. Very easy for Darshan just to pop that ward down on top of him. So advantage for CLG there in the invade. Yeah, Darshan too also taking a little bit of a kind of strange build path, going for the double long swords. I mean, he didn't have enough to actually finish the Hex Drinker right there straight off. But with the Chain Vest already done onto Soaz, he's going to be pretty comfortable in that lane. He can play back, he can just continuously clear out the wave. Shouldn't be too big of an issue. Yeah, sitting on 1,200 gold as well. So he's been farming out for a long time up there, having some free reign. But speaking of free reign, look at this one. Another easy dragon for COG. Not going to get contested by Origins. This is pretty much leading from where game, two le uh, game one left off. Yeah, CLG with another easy dragon here. Didn't end up helping, him the, helping them in the end in game number one. And they made a Good decision stuff. to get some wards down in the top side and take away the enemy red buff in response. And they really just want Soaz to keep on pushing. Has that level advantage right now. Has that CS advantage. And here comes Oriana making a feint up to the top side. No wards for CLG. Well, who he's following this now, or he was, he stopped. But this could be a dive <laughs> on a Darshan. Just getting wrapped here. <laughs> yeah, just Raptors, I guess. Good luck, top laner. Uh oh, so the there's class. the ultimate. Darshan. Oh, that was a beautiful cocoon that catched on in the shockwave as well. Well, two ult is used to make sure he catches on. Technically, three if you count the spider transfer, but uh, yeah. it will be the tower objective and the bottom as well. So, this is just like game one. Suddenly, Origin just switching on and pick themselves up a couple of objectives. I mean, that was such a nice cocoon coming in from Amazing. I mean, Soa starts this off at the perfect time. Look at that. Great timing on Win. at least going to be there. Perfect chaining of CC, one into the next. Darjan had no chance right there. Ignite goes down, and we've got to fight Hello. the top side. Amazing call, a little bit. Soaz comes in to help his teammate Mithy there as well with that Shen ultimate. Afro who pops his up. There's a kill for Darshan, <laughs> and now Mithy's going to wish he hadn't come to help, because he's going to get taken out as well. It's Smithy with that kill. He's got more stories to tell Niels, at least. I guess so. <laughs> then I went to top lane and died. <laughs> Yeah, that one didn't work out so well. So we didn't see the setup at the start of that, but clearly that just looked like Amazing stuck around far too long. And judging by the fact Teleport was used of sort while by Darshan, clearly they just collapsed on him. Just stuck around too long. Well, what happened was they had gotten that bottom tower already, and they, what they really wanted to do was try and take two towers in both the side lanes at the same time. But uh, yeah, you have to respect the TP coming out of the opponents and make sure that you're not just going to get rocked like that if you overstay your welcome, especially it was just amazing, and then an ulting Shen coming in from the support position, yeah. so a little bit greedy, that's for sure. Not the right time at all. Niels gets some damage on Dick Smithy. That turret's going to go down, but Niels is going to make them pay for it a little bit at least. He's got his support with him. Yeah, they're going to try and turn this around, chunk him out, make sure that they can actually maybe finally finish off this turret. The gold is dead even now in this game. A turret apiece. Just that one dragon giving CLG a little bit of an edge right now. Yeah, but the control right now that Origin has and the fact that they can easily contest this next dragon, uh, it really just comes down to how well they can CC the members of CLG. And just given the, what the team fights that we saw in the last game, I would really put a lot more faith in Origin in that particular situation. I feel like Darshan's been very starved in this matchup. Origin clearly have a, a set path, a set goal. Keep him down to minimalistic CS. And seems to be working well. Who he pretty much oh, just want 10 CS behind. It's just a simple back a little bit early. But look at this. Soas is oh. potentially going to collapse on towards him. Oh. And he catches him. Who he caught out. There's another shockwave. And that was just instant dismissal wow. of Who he. And that's how you have to have this synergy. You need to reliably land that combo in order to operate this team composition. And Origin is just very much delivered on that so far in this match, taking the mid turret with a great setup from Origin. They're going to get top turret at the same time, and that is it. Now they've opened up a pretty significant lead for 12 minutes. I mean, they've really done a good job this game so far, pairing a, a dive or a kill with a turret, too. It seems like they're taking those objectives when they're taking uh, members of the other team, too. Yeah, well, that's how you play well again around minion waves, is you, you have that plan set up several minutes in advance. That's what Origin is showing us, and I, I think we're seeing that really not a fluke here that they were a top four team at the World Championship, certainly an elite unit capable of uh, having some pretty good coordination and power of evil. 
slotting very nicely into this. You can see the communication he had with Soaz to make some of these plays. He's really delivering. Okay. Absolutely. Interested to hear who the shot caller is still on that team. See, obviously we're assuming it's Mithy. Mithy had a lot of discussion before, but then again, I assumed it was Mithy before and it wasn't. He just talked a lot. <laughs> That's all it was. But uh, as you mentioned, we were, we were unsure how this one's going to work out. Now, Origin looking very good moving into the, towards the European LCS Season 2. A lot of rumors floating around how Fnatic, what their status is going to be. Will they be disrupted? But Origin at the moment, they're going to be looking at what 2016 season, I believe, is the correct name for it, and uh, feeling very favorable. And at the moment, they have their eyes on the prize here at the Intel Extreme Masters. It could potentially be working away with their first bit of silverware as a organization. Uh, and it's looking good. They have the kills on a couple, especially the Oriana. I mean, right now we're looking at Power of Evil with 100% kill contribution so far in this game. And the Oriana getting fed, stat in spite of the fact that spending the money on the Rod of Ages to stack up and, of course, survive some of that LeBlanc burst, but the damage that Ori has, CLG is just so squishy outside of Aphromoo. You basically land a Malphite If you have a fed Oriana, that's going to be 100-0. to Easy. Yep. Easy. Cool time down. to think Almost. about for that next dragon. About 35 seconds until that happens. Argent takes out a pink ward as they get set up for it. CLG, I mean, we just talked about how squishy their uh, players are right now. It's going to be really hard to contest this dragon. It's going to be it's going to be really difficult. And the armor stacking still coming through for Soaz as he makes his way towards that frozen heart. But they're actually just going to push the turret right now using that Why zone not? control from the Ori. Yeah, so as you can see, just waiting off at the side, having to pull the trigger if he needs to. An unstoppable force, as I mentioned. The Glacial Shroud he picked up, working on the cooldowns, getting that frozen heart will work so well in his favor. And really, it's Huhi that's going to be the only person that's going to be able to do a great deal of damage to him. And why the hell would Huhi focus so as? But okay, second dragon, this will be the first one that Origin can test out of these two matches, really. And will CLG consider getting close to it? Doesn't look like it. Something one so. apiece. Yeah, no, there's a huge ring of wards right now just placed down by Origin as they pushed up the bottom lane. So that means they know exactly what's coming in, made it for an easy recall for Soas so we could catch the wave. Complete knowledge of the enemy team, and they're not even going to lose very many minions in that top lane. Yeah. CLG tried to use the opportunity to get a little bit more of a handle on their top and bottom lanes as far as minion waves go, and they are putting a lot of pressure on the mid lane. Neil's forced away from there. Oh, they have to be as so Uhi careful about in. this. Ooh, yes, that they cocoon do. just flashing past that. Chomper's going to keep them at bay. And remember, there's no middle turret. Power of Evil coming through, forcing who he his thought away. And as you mentioned, they have to be careful because that was a collapse very much orchestrated by Origin. If they weren't quicker, they'd have been caught. Yeah, CLG had to back off immediately. They have no wards in the enemy jungle, and they really don't have any wards in the river either. So without that mid turret, Extending like that can be very dangerous. I think they're lucky to get as much damage as they did. And here comes the split push, but so has, has the Sunfire Cape right now. I mean, he just easily clear this out. Yep, no turbo at all. And I, I feel like this is the first time we've really seen a tanky champ brought in to handle Darshan's split pushing. That seems like it works pretty well. I mean, I like it. So personally, I think it's... Whoa, uh, whoa. I mean, whoa, okay. On the stick say, Shockwave used. Can they catch him? Smithy comes in, doesn't really find a chance to get the taunt landed. He should have flashed for that. Probably. <laughs> Just go for it at that point. I think he could have eliminated stick say pretty easily. And Ooh. Speaking of eliminating, Mithy getting very, very low, but he's going to get it out. Cocoon on the Mithy rocket comes oh. in. Mithy dodges it. Who he trying to get away with that LeBlanc. Looks like he'll make it out. Who he had to burn both of his summoners to not even kill Mithy right there. I think it was especially a mistake to drop the ignite when he did. Uh, save that for a target you can actually 100 to zero. I mean, he decided to go for a chalice first uh, or an unholy grail first onto LeBlanc. So he's really not in a position to be able to 100 to zero even a support Shen at this time. And he looks like he's just trying to force plays at the moment because the tempo of the game is certainly going in Origin's favor. Yeah, we saw how bad that works out for Fnatic back at the semi-finals, honestly, in the Worlds. Trying to force those plays, backfiring, and it's, it can be tricky when, you know, you feel that you just need to make a play. You need to try and get something You're in that delicate situation, but they don't need to panic right now. They need to realize, obviously, we see the gold difference. It's, it is still pretty damn close. There's not real that big a difference. It's just simply a case of Origin completed a few items ahead of COG. 
and just took advantage of that. Yeah, yeah. and they're executing very cleanly as well. A lot of it is just a map control, you know? I mean, they've got the outer turrets, they've got the vision. CLG just is continuing to be sort of steamrolled backwards. So Darush had now completed that Black Cleaver along with the, uh, the Hex that he got early on. So suddenly we saw a, a fairly even trade with Soaz there. This is the first time they've really gone up against each other. It's been pretty much been AD carry versus top laner for the entirety of the game. So that's probably what we're going to see for, I guess, the next 10, 15 minutes at least between those two split pushing back and forward. Who's going to be stronger? Now, uh, Warden's Mail just completed by Soaz though, so that will change things once again into Soaz's favor. Yeah, yeah, 1,200 gold sitting before he based right there, decides not to actually do anything with the Negatron Cloak that he had already picked up. Not going to get the Merc Treads quite yet. This said, probably as a result of what you're talking about, yeah. D-Man. <laughs> Deciding that he might want a little bit more armor, at least for the moment. Finish off that Frozen Heart first, because he's not really in a position that he has to worry about who he too terribly much. Oh, now is this mis mispositioning? This is a big gathering from CLG, pushing in towards his mid lane turret. Oh, wow. Coming behind good. them, they're going to try and go for it. Power of Evil in a lot of trouble, gets pushed back, but luckily pushed into his teammates. Teleport's coming in, so as joins the party as well, too. Not using that ult just yet. Trying to find a chance. Looks like Origin has held CLG off for the second. Meanwhile, Niels up in that top lane, really threatening that tier two. It's not going to take him long to knock that one down if CLG doesn't do something about it. That's oh, and speaking of it, they're going to try to right now. The split target, the power of evil, though, getting caught out. It's a little too aggressive there. They thought they could try and just basically fake it out against CLG and force them away, try and head them off in the jungle, but CLG read straight through that. They did lose a tier one turret, a tier two turret though. So tier two turret for one death on the mid laner, I'll take that any day. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And the problem there is that's probably the best that CLG could have done because what Origin was already doing was they had already started to cut them off on their rotation into the top side to save the tier two. So at least they got a kill. There was a real chance that they got absolutely nothing in trade for that tier two. So at least after their first mistake, when they tried too hard to engage onto the mid lane turret and Origin uh -oh. forced them out, they got something. Amazing and a little bit of trouble. Has to repel to get on that one. So as also over the wall, who he, there's another knockup <laughs> coming in from CLG. Everybody separate there really looked like we were gonna have a kill but everyone just kind of got punted away from each yeah, other Neil's ulti I think he was expecting to land the killing <laughs> yeah. blow and instead <laughs> just booted <so too. laughs> them all to safety we've seen that a good couple of times I seem to recall a certain Alistair headbutt in the uh, worlds that happened <laughs> but, uh, well I mean it's still very close it's still just what 2,000 3,000 gold between these two power of evil shows that his positioning can catch himself out of the once in a while, and CLG very much open to fight, but they have a brick wall to push through. They, if it's not the Orianna ball, the shockwave, the unstoppable force, or Mithy just trying to run around the side, then they can put the damage down, but it's so hard to catch on to Niels, who's just going to hop away as soon as you get close to him. Uh, and again, CLG, they've been pretty much like trying to group in the mid lane throughout all of their matches today. It, it's, it's been kind of a default for them, uh, it seems like that's what they... Uh-oh. Gooey, a little bit of damage on the power of evil, about half its health gone right there. And that's a good setup to go for this dragon, and that's exactly what CLG is going to do. A little bit afraid to take it. They're going to pull it into the river. Can Origin stop this? Amazing coming in, tries to get the smite. He gets it. Nice steal from Amazing on Team Origin. They pick up their second dragon. Nobody I, made an attempt to stop him. He just no, walked yeah, up and said, walking. thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, he does. And also, you have to be careful of Elise because she does have execute damage in the spider form. So you can outburst the enemy jungler. Didn't even have to use smite for that, I don't think. Yeah, there was, there was uh, literally like zero zone control coming out of CLG. They just kind of gifted that dragon across to Origin. Now they're once again forming up in the mid lane, but they have zero vision of the side of the river. And again, Origin just come out and force them back away. This is a very much a big game of cat and mouse right now. The big ball of twine for CLG trying to catch on towards Origin, but they are just separated. So as he's just dying to pull the trigger, he's waiting to find that big juicy AD carry or mid laner. Yeah, and they have total control over the Baron side right now. Three pink wards there, so they can keep playing with this vision for CLG. Stick says the toe. Uh, look at this, look at Soaz. He's trying to bait it as Stick say comes oh, around yeah. the side. The ball was on his head, but Stick say is well aware of it by the looks. Soaz is just not taking damage right now either. He stuck around, took a lot of hits. 
where CLG didn't really seem to phase him, but never got quite close enough to engage onto Stixay. I mean, Origin just has total information right now. They have a huge ring of wards right around the river on both sides, and so they're using that to their advantage. And CLG, they're trying to just push this way forward, but they're not there afraid. We go. Oh, oh my! The combo, combo, can they follow it up? Looks like they can. Neils with the killer. Oh, the double kill for Stixay as he fires the Jinx rocket into Origin. So as on the run already, man, Stixay turned that one around. I mean, that was very pretty at first, but there wasn't enough follow-up damage from that Shockwave quite yet. And that meant that there was a lot of Execute damage coming in from the Riven ult as well as the Jinx Rocket. Yeah. Uhi. Uhi playing with fire Goodbye. there. Always away. <laughs> And now that, no that's chance. Afro Moon and Stixa, very low hit. Now, if this was double lifted, a rocket jumping in for this one, he's going to try it, and he may well get it. There we go, double. Gets the reset, jumps on. Oh, oh the no. flash. Oh, dearie me. And Midley well, passes on the story to Niels, and that's a beautiful triple. Yeah, Niels right there, really delivering, just jumping to the side, staying in range, and then actually flashing the pulverize so that he could make it out, reset his jump, and then get it. Stixa failing the flash over the, uh, the thick part of the wall. And that means it will be a 24-minute Baron for Origin. That's exactly what they wanted to sort of ease themselves into the late game as we are at now. And what's Origin going to be able to get with this Baron buff? Well, I mean, they can go back and spend a lot of that gold. There was a lot of posturing for a long time, but this is Niels. This is <laughs> just as we were talking about the double if moment. The kills, the resets, everything working out for Tristan. who has been a champion oh, of this tournament. It's tough. It's a AC, tough one. yeah, Mithy just coming in as well, having that one step ultimate, away, ultimate, one yeah. frame. I mean, you got to keep in mind too that you know Niels came in as a rookie this year, and even after Worlds, continuing to have just a spectacular year. It's really quite impressive how far Niels has come in such a short period of time. Yeah, and that was a, a very nice Tristana play. Four zero zero now on but, that champion. We have to remember how that started too, which is again who he kind of getting a little bit over aggressive, yeah. attempting a turret dive, and then just getting absolutely red. So Niels with a really good sense of when his opponents are going to be aggressive. Sounds a lot like game one, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it really does. <laughs> I feel like we're seeing a bit of desperation from who he in the finals. It just seems like he really wants to make something happen, but. He's forcing it too much, you know? I mean, the, the difference is the origin of totally controlled Darshan. Like, Darshan has yes. not yes. been able to do what he did. Clearly, they were sat in the back, like, okay, this guy's clearly the, the real big threat. Zion Spartan, Darshan, whichever you like to call him. It's a bit of tournament of name changes uh, throughout. But uh, <laughs> this is going to be a very easy turret picked up for Origin, but they just had had a game plan coming into this one and executed it very well. Wow, X Smithy got executed there Whoa. by Niels. Oh, Soaz goes deep. There's a nice shockwave to pick up a bit more for Origin. Kill on to Stixay. Aframu going down afterwards. Soaz low. Niels going deep. Can't quite kill off Darshan. Meanwhile, who he tries to make something out of nothing, but he's just going to have to watch his inhibitor. They may get down. They may just try and they end this. They only have about 20 seconds, but maybe they can make it work. Well, Darshan and who he's still up, so you've got a decent amount of damage. But all five members of Origin right there. There goes Nexus turret number two, and then Nexus under threat. It's going to get taken out, and CLG is going to find themselves 0-2 against Origin. <laughs> So I'm, always yeah. looks so happy after a win. <laughs> <laughs> he was, you know, he's not happy about playing Malphite. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. just had a fun game on Gangplank. Oh, yeah. He's playing support there, but OG really just executing in those dives. Very nice coordination with this team, showing that they can work together. Power of Evil doing very nicely, you know, knowing when to use that shockwave and really helping out uh, his team throughout the entire course of this game. Yeah, the wombo combo setup, it, it's, yeah. it's what we were wondering. Obviously, we looked at it against CLG, the big shockwave, the court double lift, very well executed alongside Mithy. This time with Soaz, clearly very easy combo to set up, unbreakable, uh, unstoppable force, sorry, just piling straight in. And it just worked out, and it just set up Niels nicely, 6-0 at the end there. Yeah, I mean, you really can't ask for a much cleaner game than uh, what Origin showed us right there. Just methodically pushing across the map, handling the big threat on CLG, which was Darshan. And yeah, pretty yeah. pretty clean game, too. Yeah, and I think that CLG has been exposed here a little bit. Like, what, we've, what we saw 
so far in this tournament, again, going back to that Echo game, what I said in there is that their strategy really has been just pressure the mid lane with who he, keep him pushed up, chip away the towers, and then try and get Darshan fed, but it's just not working against Origin. They're getting red, and when who he can't control the mid lane as well, uh, they he's a little bit vulnerable. He's getting do dove in that game, so it's it's getting a little bit rough for CLG, and we'll see if See if who he can pick it up, but it's the Darshan show is what CLG has been, and I think Origin is showing they've got a bit, little bit more depth. Well, we'll come back after the break, ladies and gentlemen, see whether Game 3 will be a 3-0 for Origin, or whether CLG will be able to get themselves back into it. Join us after the break. Welcome back, everyone. Game two just ended at Origin is still leading. It is 2-0, not looking too good for CLG. Uh, but we do want to recap that one moment near the end where it was a little unfortunate on CLG's side. But Crepolito, sir, as we pull up the replay, this is a moment where uh, some people remember it from one team's point of view and some people remember it from the other. Yeah, I just I just really like the way Nils has been playing this game. We can immediately just start rolling the clip right here. And this is just another fight where Origin just seemed, yeah, just a little more controlled here. We at least you have Hui going in. Uh, he goes low, decides to flash uh, for, for style points again. And then Niels, what he does here, it doesn't look that impressive, but he jumps, acting stupid like he's going to get turned on. He predicts the Q flash from Afro because it's so hard to, like, you can't reactively flash it, so he predicts Afro's going to Q flash. Tilt sticks A, sticks A with that play, he flashes into a wall, and he just generated himself three kills for a triple kill. And that guy, he is just so damn confident. He yeah, he doesn't care. Nothing phases him. I never see Nils stressed. Like when I talked to him before or after matches, he's, even when he plays perfect, he's like, "Yeah, okay, I, I played okay. That's it. That's, <laughs> that's his evaluation." Yeah. I'm like, "Dude, you played perfect. Yeah, but my team carried me every time." Like, so wow. I, I really, love, I really like, like watching Nils overall. Yeah, yeah, I mean that play as you guided us through. Just the fact, the angles where he jumped and the way that he flashed. It was clearly just all that's how it played out in his head before it happened. He was like. This is obviously how it's going to play out, and I'm going to get all these kills. This yeah. is what as it is. As soon as he's posturing forward, he's like, he's going to go for some kind of combo. Where the WQ flash you doesn't matter. He's like, if I flash, I break whatever you're doing, and I can hit you from there. And it was just it was perfect. As soon as his auto was done, he's in between attacks, pop backwards. And you feel so horrible. If, if you're yeah. that support, when you see somebody yeah. jumping, you've seen the clips today where so many Tristanas, you know, remember, when I think it was Soas, you know, that reacted on the Tristana jump with flash, uh, Riven stun, and you really want to be that guy that predicts a jump. Right. And then you get flashed and you just stand there and you just, yeah, you're dead. <laughs> well, I mean, in Afrimu's defense, if he did hit that combo, he probably would have headbutt him right into Chomper. Oh, no, that was, oh, yeah, that, was that was a kill play right there. Yeah, but Neil's yeah. just... Knew. Neil's just too good, man. Yeah, he's he too good. Yep, I mean, he mind game out of that. And overall, I mean, this time we really saw why we've been talking about Neil's constantly. I mean, Neil's, Neil's, Neil's. Here it is. This time it was him. So as had to take a backseat a little bit yeah. in this game with the champion pick. And this is what a, this is what a really good team looks like, right? It, it's a team that knows how to shotgun, knows how to play multiple styles as well, which is a very big deal, and has a bunch of skilled players all down the line. Like that's. That's the perfect core of a team, is every single player is awesome, your shot calling is solid, and you can play different styles. And that's that's Origin. I mean, you could have, like, maybe picked apart their top four at Worlds and be like, well, you know, they had two fluky wins, and then they got the easiest quarterfinal opponent. But, like, you look at sort of just how well rounded their play is, and, like, okay, yeah, it's New Look CLG, but, like, Origin are this good. And I think we're going to keep seeing Origin be this good, especially now that have player upgrades. I mean, Power's playing awesome, and, and it's just it's an exciting team to watch in the new year. And I really like how proactive they are as well. 
when I saw the Malphite pick, I just kind of get flashbacks to TSM at Worlds. It was like, oh god, Malphite again. <laughs> the least proactive team in League of Legends. Yeah, they don't silly. do anything with it. Some of the combos they pulled with the Malphite ulti, a lot of them, like, even when Soas was flashing forward to then ulti, he already had the ball on his back from the Orianna. So those plays, they're already being prepared. He went top lane, Malphite ulti into, like, the cocoon that just, like, Bends around yeah, the minion, yeah. you know, wanted style from Angelina Jolie, following from Amazing. These guys are so in sync, and the plays, they're just, they're all working out. They make, make it look easy, almost. Yeah, yeah, so good. Yeah, Origins play has been pretty impressive so far. If you missed any of those, don't forget to go check out all the highlights, POV VODs, and other features coming in from this week here in San Jose for the Intel Extreme Masters on Plays.tv. Well, 2-0 so far. Before we jump, before we take a break and jump to the third game, so far, it's not looking too good. It's starting to look like a 3-0, guys, but that means we've had sweeps for the whole weekend, I think. Yeah. Here in San Jose. I mean, is CLG gonna, just going to let that happen, or do they uh, not have a choice? I, <laughs> that I don't see them pulling it out, specifically because they had the counter pick on mid lane that game, and who he just got destroyed. Mm. And I think he's the weak link in this, mm. in this whole... I mean, he's the weakest link out of the CLG roster right now, and I think that Origin knows that. They're just going to keep hitting him. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Weaker than Link is basically what you said right there. I mean, just oh god, <laughs> downgrades the mid lane no. the whole time. No, I mean this is yeah. Like, the chance of winning a game is maybe like twenty five percent right now for CLG. Like, they can pull it out, right? Like these guys can still shot call well, but they keep getting put in situations where like Origin are playing better than them. And if there's a way yeah. to like get situations where like CLG makes the right gut call and Sticks makes the right choice or who he makes the right choice, like who he's had good games, he's probably not going to have many against Power People. But like if you play that one on one a hundred times. Who he wins lane like five, ten times out of that, and you just need like <laughs> that's comforting. You need, you need okay. those those right. games, right? And it's rare, but it can happen. So we are the ten percent. Yeah, we see <laughs> five to 10%. three times in a row. I mean, yeah, that's the other thing. In the other games we've seen from CLG so far, it's not that Hui was ever like a superstar in those games, but he also, you know, just made sure he held his own. That he was there when they needed him to be. He was there to be present at team fights and whatnot. But so far in their games against Origin, Power of Evil definitely has his number. We'll have to find out if he can bring it up in game three. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to a quick break. And during that break, don't forget to check out some of the sales we have over at ESL.gg slash Amazon IEM and get a lot of select products for up to 75% off and helping your surprise pull a little bit. I mean, there's not much time left. So it's, you know, maybe that portion, you're not relying on that too much unless you buy the whole you know, the whole page, everything on the page, you might make a big difference there. But after the break, we'll come back for the third game between Origin and CLG.